morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So, we've had VMAX Rising for a little while now, and it's got me thinking, well, we've had some tournament results. We've started to see what's actually good. So, this seems like a fairly convenient time for me to drop a top 10 list of cards from VMAX Rising. And I do feel pretty good about my top 10 list. The order, a lot of it you could swap around, but I'm pretty happy with the conclusions. Now, there were a couple of Pokemon that were very close to the list, but I did have to leave off. I love the Vikavolt. One lightning, two colorless energy. You do 20 damage for each energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Plus 60 damage base. And this is a deck that can use triple acceleration energy. And of course, let's not forget the Charger Bug that you can literally just attach as a double lightning energy. And all of a sudden, things are looking pretty good. I can also do 170 with a second attack, which ain't too bad. Similarly, Galarian Mr. Rhyme didn't make the list, though I may live to regret that. Galarian Mr. Rhyme has just got an ability that prevents all effects and attacks done to your Pokemon that have any energy attached to them. And all existing effects are removed. Special conditions, you can't attack, you can't retreat, all of this kind of stuff is all stopped by Galarian Mr. Rhyme. Don't know how relevant it is nowadays, but I get the feeling it will be in the not-too-distant future. And also, close but no cigar for Appleton. It has got an ability whereby once during your turn you flip a coin, and if heads, you get to grab one of your opponent's benched basic Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. It's not perfect gusting because you can only grab basics, but we are in a phenomenally basic heavy format at the moment, which means there's no real reason why you shouldn't be able to absolutely clean up with this. Again, I just think it's a card that's going to see an awful lot of play, and I think it's going to be teched into an awful lot of decks. But we do now need to have a little bit of a chat about the actual top 10, and coming in at number 10, we've got Dragapult. Now, Dragapult is a card that hasn't seen a huge amount of success as far as I can tell, but there is so much potential here, I cannot leave it off the list. You see, it's got an ability whereby if any damage would be done to this Pokemon, you flip a coin, and if heads, that damage gets prevented. That means that even if you can one-hit KO, you've only got a 50% chance of getting a KO. If you're two-hit KOing, you've still got to attack twice, except every attack only has a 50% chance of going through, which means there is a decent chance that you're actually not gonna make it work. And a Pokemon that can't be attacked can't be KO'd, and a Pokemon that can't be KO'd is probably gonna be staying around on the field for quite some time. Now the attack is fine. Two Psychic Energy, it does 120 damage, and you get to place three damage counters, but it really is the ability that excites me here. In at number 9, Galarian Surfetched. And it's very simple and straightforward, this one. One fighting, two colorless energy, 180 damage. That is a lot of damage on a single prize Pokemon for not very much energy, comparatively. It can't use the attack until it gets out of the active, but switch. Use Air Balloon there, done. But the other thing is you're a fighting Pokemon, and it's the fighting tools that really make this. You've got Karate Belt to reduce the attack cost. Martial Arts Dojo and Diancy Prism Star to do a little bit of extra damage. And that new Twin Energy card, which I suspect might come up later on in the video. And all of a sudden, we've just got the makings of a really good deck that is already seeing play and success over in Japan. In at number 8, I'm cheating a little bit, we're going Milo, and we're going Sonya. Basically, the two new draw supporters from the card. Both decent draw supporters, neither are absolute phenomenal staples in every deck, but are still pretty good. Sonya lets you search your deck for two basic Pokemon or basic energy, reveal them and put them into your hand, which means you can get your energy or you can get your Pokemon. It's good, it's adaptable, it's nice search. 
Milo lets you discard up to two cards from your hand, drawing two cards for each one you discard it. If you're just only ever going to discard Pokemon, Roxy is better because you draw three cards for each one discarded. But it's only non-EX, non-GX Pokemon, so it's kind of irrelevant. Milo is a decent draw card. Sonya is a decent search card. And although they're not out-and-out out phenomenal, they are going to be popping up in a bunch of decks. So I think that puts it in at number 8. In at number 7, another cheat for both Turf Field Stadium and Full Bucket. Both pretty good cards. Both going to see play. Both very specific to one typing. Full Bucket is Professor's Letter. It lets you search for two basic energy and put them into your hand, just so long as both of those basic energy are water. Huge advantage to water decks. And especially given that we've got Frostmoth at the moment, that lets you attach all that water energy to your bench water Pokemon as you like, I think it's probably fair to say this is going to be a very good card in all these water decks. Turfield Stadium lets you search an Evolved Grass Pokemon, and in any deck that plays Evolved Grass Pokemon, it's going to be phenomenal. We've already seen it seeing play with Rillaboom. We've already seen it seeing play with Butterfree. Now that we've got the new Caterpie that lets you evolve right up into it. Didn't make the list, unfortunately, but still a fun card. And I don't see any reason why this wouldn't just keep going for essentially every grass deck with evolutions from now until it rotates out it really is a phenomenal card and now we've got a big run of pokemon v's and v maxes because they really are the headliners in the set coming in at number six inteleon v and inteleon v max and i'm going to tell you right now right off the bat there is an excellent chance that i am rating these too low and that they should, in fact, actually be higher. But I'm cool with it. You see, Inteleon V, for a single energy, single water energy, lets you do 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's fine, it's not stunning, but it, it's all right. And then we've got 130 for free energy, and your opponent reveals their hand. Again, okay, nothing stunning, but we're looking all right here. But then we bring in Inteleon V Max, and things get way better. One water energy, 60 damage, and you may return an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to their hand. Which doesn't sound amazing, but if you combine this with things like Team Yell, Grunt, and Crushing Hammer, it adds up very, very quickly to a pretty good energy denial deck. And then, of course, just in case that wasn't good enough, We've also got an attack here that for free energy does 160 to the active, 60 to the bench. So you can be taking out evolution Pokemon, i.e. your evolving basics. Something like Snom. I love Snom. Snom doesn't stand a chance, ladies and gentlemen. Or you can just be setting up bigger Pokemon for bigger KOs down the road. Inteleon does a lot and there's a lot to be excited about. In at number 5, Rillaboom V... And Rillaboom V Max. You see, Rillaboom from Sword and Shield is a great, great Pokemon that we're all very excited about. Just lets you accelerate two grass energy from your deck to one of your Pokemon. It's good. But we didn't have the best attacker. And now we do. You see, Rillaboom V for 4 energy does 220. Now it does 30 to itself, but it does 220. And in case that's not enough, Rillaboom V Max comes in, and for 4 energy, you do 130. But you may discard up to 3 grass energy from this Pokemon, and do 50 more for each card discarded in this way. So now, you're not actually doing 130, you might be... But one energy discarded 180, 2, 230, 3, 280. 280 is an awful lot of damage. Now the Rillaboom V's got an attack that searches your deck for two basic grass Pokemon and put them onto your bench. And Rillaboom V Max does 50 for a single energy. But it's the big attacks combined with the energy acceleration of Rillaboom that gets us all excited here. In at number four, we've got Boltund V. 
Bolton V is going to be popping up in a lot of lightning decks. But I think at the moment we're still in that phase where we're trying to figure out if it's actually good enough or not. You see, Bolton V for two energy does 10 damage plus 30 more for each lightning energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So if you can get enough energy out, this is looking good. And maybe you play it with Raichu in a Snuggly Generator deck, using Pachirisu to accelerate energy and a Molga to search out your Nuzzle Pokemon and all of that. Or maybe you play it with Pikachu and Zekrom that tend to get a fair bit of energy on the field. Or maybe you play it with Naganadal to get lightning energy on the field. Either way, you're going to have Tapu Koko to get two cheeky energy on the field very easily. And you've got the makings of a Pokemon that could be really good in a whole bunch of decks. Or could end up being a bit of a flash in the pan. But a card which I am pretty gosh darn sure is not a flash in the pan. Double. I think double is ridiculous. You see, double V... I mean, it... Look, it's got 210 HP and an ability that reduces damage done to it by 30. But that's not what we're excited about. What we're excited about is the attack that for free energy does 120. And then 30 more for each prize card your opponent has taken. And there are two reasons I absolutely adore this. Number one... It's colourless energy, so you really can put it into any deck you like. Number two, Reset Stamp. And essentially what you do here is you drop a Reset Stamp, and then your opponent gets put down to a low hand size. I mean, let's say they've taken five prizes. You drop a Reset Stamp. Your opponent goes down to a one-card hand, while Double comes in hitting for 270 damage. That's going to make a big comeback. Pretty gosh darn quickly. In at number two, we've got Cinderace V Max. And I'll tell you something for nothing, ladies and gentlemen. If I hadn't seen a week's worth of results from over in Japan, there is absolutely no way Cinderace V Max would have been at number two on this list. But it is proving to be an absolute, almost unstoppable monster over in Japan. And all right, there's a bit of hyperbole there. But it's pretty great. The V is not that great. The ability gives free retreat if there's a stadium in play and free energy 140 meh. You've got Welder, so you can pay it easily in one turn, but it's still not terribly exciting. But the V Max is terribly exciting. And it's one of those ones that I didn't know if it was going to work. It works. One fire, one colorless energy, 30 damage. And you do as much damage as this Pokemon received from attacks during your opponent's last turn. If you took 60 damage, you do 90. If you took 90 damage, you do 120 and so on. But the other thing is here, that it's not damage as is on you. It's damage that you took last turn. So you can heal. And you still get the extra damage, even though the damage has been healed off. Which is kind of ridiculous. And then, of course, your opponent's general theory here would be, look, I'll just take a couple turns, build up Pokemon, and start hitting you when I've got attacks that do the right amount. Either I hit you, but then I'm out of range, or I can one-hit you. Yeah, you've also got free energy 170 plus burn. And bearing in mind, you've got Welder to get the two energy on. So this is a one-turn paying attack. So you've got a Pokemon which is very hard to one-hit KO with 320 HP. That if you don't one-hit KO, hits you back really hard, even if they healed, which is not usually the case for these revenge and outrage attacks. And if you dilly-dally for a little while, you get hit for 170 plus burn. This is a very good Pokemon. But in at number one, it's Twin Energy, and I don't think there's a huge argument otherwise. Twin energy is two colorless energy. It is a return of double colorless energy, but it only provides one colorless energy if it is attached to a Pokemon GX or a Pokemon V. And this is going to open up the format. 
This is going to make decks viable that weren't before. No, it doesn't help Pokemon G, X, or V, but we don't need more help for them. They're good enough, gosh darn it. I love this. There are so many Pokemon, like Surfetch, that we saw earlier on in this video, that we would be going, we can't make it work, it's too expensive, and now we're going, oh, you know what, that'll work. Yeah, that's actually not bad. We can live with that. And there's a whole bunch of Pokemon that already can use it and a whole bunch that will in the future. Something like Lost March that's got four jump luff and then no real backup attackers, not easy to use ones anyway, all of a sudden now have both Natu and Cottony, and Whimsicott for that matter, all of whom can now attack for a single energy because we've got twin energy back. And that's just one example, right? The Steelix from Cosmic Eclipse. That'll work. I'm not going to keep going. There's so many options here. It's going to get silly before too long. My point is that there's just so many Pokemon that are going to be helped by this. It is a little bit over the top. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. They are the top 10 cards from VMAX Rising. And now I'd like to know your top 10. Which ones that didn't make the list do you think should have been on there? Which ones are too high? Which are too low? Though do please remember, if you're putting some up, you've got to put them down. If you're putting them down, you've got to put some up. Go nuts in the comment section, but do be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have pokemon in but are still pretty gosh darned awesome but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.